Hello and welcome to another video on Soding channel. Today we're going to start a new series about Cadbury framework. This is the isomorphic framework for building universal front-end apps using components, flux, architecture and progressive rendering. Sounds pretty cool actually. Those series are actually recorded on the stream. For future streams you can just follow twitch.tv slash Soding and YouTube dot com slash sonic as well so i stream on both platforms simultaneously let's try to answer the question what is isomorphic applications i'm not even sure if i pronounce it correctly isomorphic isomorphic uh, sometimes they called universal applications but as far as i know there is a significant difference between universal applications and isomorphic applications universal means that the code doesn't depend on any environment for example any kind of like sort of generic algorithm like computing prime numbers or any kind of sorts they don't care about your environment whether you're running it in the browser or on the server or why not js isomorphic code essentially means that it behaves the same on different environments but it has a different implementation to deal with those different environments cadbury is isomorphic framework but you have to write universal code because the differences in the environment are handled by the cadbury framework so we live in the age of single page applications but they have their own disadvantages so i'm by the way i just want to say a disclaimer i'm not really a web developer i just tend to know HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and HTTP on a decent level, but I'm not considering myself a web developer. I just know how to do that. So if I say something wrong, please let me know in the comments below somewhere. Single page applications are not really search engines friendly. People tend to come up with different tricks to actually make those applications searchable, trying to, for example, render a single page application on the server side. This leads to creating two versions of your application, so the single page application and minimal server side application, and these are different codes and it's really difficult to support them. How Cadbury allows you to solve that problem is it acts like a single page application for the user but it also able to render your single page applications on the server side using the same code. You just write universal code and Cadbury framework is able to render everything on server and on the front end. When the user works with the front end, it renders in the browser. And when the, for example, Google queries your pages, it renders on the server. The main, the core concept in Cadbury JS is components. They are really similar to web components. And as far as I know, they actually implement the specification of web components, but Cadbury framework extends that specification with some custom stuff. So essentially you can create web components that consist of other web components that consist of other web components. So you sort of have a tree of web components. Those components can be rendered both on front end and back end. And since sometimes your application will be rendered on server, you want that process to be done as quickly as possible. And to achieve that, Cadbury Framework implements so-called progressive rendering. The modern browsers, they can render your page as soon as they get the data from the server. As soon as the server gets, uh, for example, an image tag, it will start loading the image even though the entire page is not loaded yet. You can actually use that behavior of the browsers. For example, in HTTP protocol, there is chunked encoding. That means you can split your data that you send to the browser in chunks and send them as soon as they're ready. Since our page consists of discrete components, we can render them by chunks and send them as soon as they are ready. Even though it sometimes renders stuff on the server, it's usually pretty fast because it uses the idea of progressive rendering. Um, I hope I didn't lie anywhere. I know personally the creator of that framework and I'm really afraid that if I say something incorrectly, he'll probably kill me. Okay, let's try to create a Cadbury application. So the first thing that we need to do is to install globally Cadbury CLI, but I cannot install it globally because of the limitations of my operating system. So I'm going to install it locally, but you probably want to install it globally. Create a folder, Cadbury, hello. Let's just go to that folder. Initialize that, 
Cadbury hello first version Cadbury hello world application test command I'm not going to test anything git repository not going to publish that keywords cats author is Alexi Kotel MIT license yes that's that's true I'm going to install the Cadbury CLI locally specifically for that project so I'm going to install a Cadbury CLI it was installed in node modules. So let's initialize an empty Cadbury application. Okay, destination is not empty, continue, it's okay. Yes. So this is how our application looks like now. Let's go through each individual file and see what it does. Browser JS. Let's open it. This is the part of the Cadbury framework that will be run in the browser. As the documentation says, it's a, it's an entry script for the browser environment. By the way, on the official site, you can find a documentation and it should contain the description of all of the files. Uh, Build.js. Uh, I believe that it's a script for building your Cadbury application. If you take a look at the package JSON, it invokes build.js and then server.js. So I believe it's just a script for building your entire um, Cadbury application. The next is folder Cadbury components. And this is where all of the components that I mentioned before sits in the project. Cadbury stores is the home for Cadbury stores. Cadbury stores are essentially the source of data for Cadbury components. We will look at them in the details a bit later, maybe in the future videos. Config, it's folder with configuration for different environments. So uh, we have two configuration files for browser environment and for the server environment. The first one is called browser.json. The second one is called environment.json. It's kind of strange configuration for browser environment called browser.json, but configuration for the server is called environment. It feels like a historical reason. So maybe in the beginning there, there was only one file, which was called environment. And then we realized that we need to separate those environments and create a browser. But this is just my thought. npm ignore just contains the common stuff that needs to be ignored. There's a readme nothing special, and rows.js. It contains the rows for Cadbury project. We'll see how to define roads in Cadbury framework a little bit later. And the server JSON, it's similar to browser JSON, but opposite. It's an entry point for server side of Cadbury framework. So yeah, this is how it looks like. To start the project, we need to install the dependencies. Let's do that. After all of the dependencies are installed, we need to run the application in debug mode. I probably want to expand it a little bit. Once the application has been started, it's ready on 3000th port. Local host. And this is how the empty Cadbury application looks like. Uh, let's take a look at more substantial examples of Cadbury application. One of the such examples will be probably the homepage of Cadbury JS. It's also implemented in Cadbury framework. Another more or less substantial example would be a to-do application. Okay, .org. I never actually used it. Hello world test. So this is this is what you can implement in Cadbury framework. Okay, so this was just an introduction to Cadbury framework. On the next video, we're going to start a project in that framework and we'll see what we can do with it. All right, see you next time. Bye. I don't know how many people are watching me right now, so probably nobody's watching.